Vanekin, you can kiss my ass. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for watching. I was recently in a discussion in NSR Tactical's Facebook group, which you should join. Uh, NSR Tactical's Facebook group. Go ahead and get in there and learn some stuff. But I was recently in a discussion there about fighting rifles. And this was actually spurred on by my Anatomy of a Fighting Rifle video. And the original post had a Daniel Defense rifle in, in there talking about what is your fighting rifle. Well, the original post had a rifle with the telescoping buttstock extended all the way out, like you see here. Now, um, that sparked a discussion about length of pool between myself and a couple of alumni, and we decided that it would be a good idea to talk about length of pool and how you actually set your rifle up and how you determine what your proper length of pool is. Now, first, there's a couple of different ways to do this, and there's a little bit more in-depth way to do this where you actually um, bring the rifle up and you start all the way collapsed and you hold the rifle up like so and you hold it out with one hand and you base the correct length of pull uh, on the tension or the torque on your wrist here. So if you notice for me with my super long manly arms that that's a little bit cramped. Like if I go here I got a lot of tension in my wrist and it's not very uh, biomechanically efficient. So I want to pull it out one. I'm going to start on one here. I'm going to go here and it's still a little tight. It's still a little bit contentious there in my wrist and it, and it has a little bit of binding if you will. Now as I move out to um, position two here, I can put the rifle up, present like I have a, a, a good fighting uh, position here, you know, I'm ready to go. And as I move it out, I can find the optimal place for me. We'll go out to number three. And if I extend it too far, like three is a little far for me, but if I extend it to number three, like now my wrist is actually straining the other way to keep the rifle steady and stable. Uh, and for me, number two, position number two is actually ideal right there. But there's actually a little bit simpler way to determine this, and, it, and it's maybe a shortcut, or it's maybe a um, a little bit more simplistic mess, method to get there. And if you take your you take your rifle and you hold it like you're gonna fight with it, right? So you have you have a nice fighting uh, grip on the rifle. If you take it and you turn it up, get it in your workspace, like my pull dynamics. If you get it in your workspace here, then if you touch the butt of the stock to your elbow crease here, the crease in your elbow, that is generally your length of pull. So from your elbow to your wrist. Let me see if I can get that on camera for you. And if it touches in there, like really, let's go out one more. Like it sits in there and it rests in that crease very easily. That's typically your length of pull with no body arm or anything like that so that when you bring it up it's consistent and, and the torque on your fire control hand is minimal. You have minimal stress and minimal torque on that hand so this hand is not doing a lot of work. This hand isn't struggling to maintain um, control of the rifle and basically this hand is free to manipulate the trigger, work the fire controls and do what you need it to do to shoot fast and shoot accurately. Um, and the easiest way I found to do that is to simply measure basically the length of your forearm. So from the crease of your elbow to your wrist, that's pretty much your length of pull. And it's obviously something that you can um, get to a point where you're pretty comfortable with it and then fine tune it from there. But for most people, that is the simplest and easiest way to determine your length of pull, just like so. Now, some things to remember is when you're determining your length of pull, uh, what you're wearing and the kit you're using and whatever you're doing is going to determine that. So if I have plates on and armor, I'm actually going to want to shorten this length of pull because the spot where this rifle gets to my to my uh, weld in my shoulder pocket is going to be further out than it with no armor, right? So with no armor, I can bring that in closer and now that angle is more extreme on my wrist. But with armor on... If I bring that in, it's going to stop right here, and now that natural angle of the wrist in that 
uh, ability to, to manipulate the fire controls and to really shoot fast is mitigated by the body armor. So uh, it, it really depends on what you're doing and, and your purpose that you're using the rifle for. For me, I typically run an SOE micro rig in, uh, in my rifle classes and when I train and practice. So I want it uh, out to that third spot so that it's a natural pocket there and then when I when I present the rifle this hand is doing nothing basically to control the rifle except for fire control right manipulating the trigger working the safety on and off mag all that stuff this hand is free to do the things that I needed to do to make this rifle run efficiently and smoothly so um, that's basically how you, a, a quick and easy way to determine your length of pull put it in your your elbow pocket there and you should be good to go. If you want to get more in depth you can use the um, method where you plant it in your shoulder pocket and you uh, hold it simply with your firing control arm and you make sure that your wrist has the least amount of tension on it. It has the least uh, workload on your wrist because your wrist is going to be the first thing that fatigues and that's going to, that's going to um, lead you to cramping and, and losing mobility in your fingers there. So you want the least workload on your wrist. Kind of like 8th grade. You remember 8th grade summer? <laughs> like, you want the least workload on your wrist and that's the best way to manipulate your rifle. <laughs> Alright guys, so that's determining your length of pull with your fighting rifle. Remember to head on over to Facebook.com. Check out NSR Tactical's discussion group. It's a great place. There's over 30,000 members. Uh, a lot of good knowledge is shared there. I'm there. Uh, and we're, we're trading, you know, tactical tips and training tips and things that we've learned along the way. Uh, also, find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Standing on Second. If you guys like the video, you found it useful, please like, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out. And seriously, you guys stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you next time. Hey, dickhead. You can't laugh in the background. Sorry. I, 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 I can laugh a little bit on that one. That one, you asked for the laughter on that one. No, you can't. You can't. Okay. I'm going to, come on. That adds to it. No. All right. <laughs>